Alright, welcome back everyone. Now let's actually create our first final report for this data set for the model we have created. We have also explored various time intelligence functions and now we want to visualize some results because the table itself is of course for understanding but now let's actually do a few more visual appealing things for our audience, right? So I click on the plus symbol here and I rename this as let's say final report, final report here and then we can start creating our report here. And by the way, you already know, if you do not like the current theme, you could always start under view and simply switch, switch to a different theme here. In my case, I leave now the default one, but if you'd like to choose any other kind of theme, feel free to do that. Beside this, also take a look at the themes which are available in the gallery or customize the current theme, which you currently use, right? The colors, the font sizes, everything can be customized. So let's stick to the default theme for me now. And then what I like to use here is instead I, use li I like to use a wallpaper as a background. So I click somewhere on the canvas and then I go to the formatting options and here I can specify on the page background, I could specify a color if I want or I will do differently. I simply go to wallpaper here and say I'd like to add an image. And in my case, I switch to this image here. So I can select this here, I click on open and then I have this image as my background. Of course, you can use any other kind of image you want, but for me now, I'm using this image. And by the way, if you need some inspiration or free images, I have here a, a page which is called pexels.com. And as far as I know, this site is for free. So yeah, there you can download specific images you want. Here as I was searching for buildings and I can check out all the buildings or other kinds of, well, specific search terms you're using here, okay? And download those. So um, this is just an, a reference for you if you search for images. Now. I'm using this image and I like to actually set the transparency maybe a little bit higher, a little wider, so I don't want to uh, the, the background to dominate it too much. So I'll maybe set it to, let's just check it out. It's maybe, let's go with 30 probably, okay? So that's fine for me. And also you can specify here, do you want to fit it, normally fit the image, then it would look like that, or also uh, fill the image, then it would look like that. So you can play around with that, the best option you, you want to have, you want to use. In my case, I'm thinking i go with the normal one, but as I said, try it out yourself. So, okay, we got an image. The next thing is I like to add a header. So some kind of a header for my report. So I go to insert and then there is an option to add a te text box here. I select it and then I simply put in some names here. In this case, or some text here. And this is the final, let's call this the final report. Then I highlight everything, press control A and then I make it bold and also increase the text size here to maybe 18. Let's try and find out, is it big enough? Well, I don't know. Let's actually maybe try it like that. And then I also like to center this here. I'll click on center option. And then I drag this somewhere in here. But of course, I also go to formatting. And here I have the option to align it properly. So I can simply say, I like to see this distributed horizontally. Okay, so it's in the center. This is the first thing I like to have. Then next to that, um, probably maybe increase the size a little bit more. Let's go with, let's say, uh, 24. Okay, and then of course we need to uh, size it a little bigger like that. And again, I go to formatting option and align and say I distribute horizontally. So, of course, this is something you need to try out and figure out what works best for you. Beside this, um, here I currently have a white background. Maybe I like to keep this background, but also maybe I like to change it. Let's let's change it. Let's leave it for now. I change it later, maybe, simply to explore what actually is available and what looks best in our report. So next to this one here, I like to visualize maybe, let's say I have a donut chart. You can also go with pie or any other kind of visual you want. For now, I go with the donut chart. And what I like to see is I like to see my sales. So I'll go in here, let's say, or let's say the profit. I like to see my profit, I select profit here. And then of course I need to slice this somehow because currently I only see the profit, but simply a normal donut chart. I want to slice it by something, by a dimension. So I'm going maybe with the products. And under products here, I have the product name. So I can select this. And then what I get is, well, I get a really cluttered um, donut chart here. Well, this is not really what I want. So this is, doesn't look very good. What I like to have instead is I like to group my products. So maybe I say um, the first 40 products, in this case is the first group, the next group is then the next 40 products, and the last 20 is the third group. Of course, this is just an example, right? You probably have in the real data, in the real world, you might have a better data set than this one. But here, let's actually say I would like to group my data here. So the names itself, just to have it not that cluttered, but I want to see it as a group. So what we could do is we can right click on the product name here in the fields list, right click, and then there's an option to add a group. So a new group here. You can take this 
and then you see that a new window appears, just a second, there it is. And this allows us to specify a group, let's call this uh, product group, I name this uh, product group. And then you can here choose the, all the fields and to which group they belong. So in my case, I make it pretty simple here, just because I wanted to show you the functionality itself. So you, I select the first one, then I scroll down, let's say to the, in this case, the 40th one. So this one, I hold my shift key, I select all of them, and then I say this is the group. And let's say these are my, let's call them top products, okay, products. I press enter, and I've created a group here. And I can, of course, um, collapse this if I want, and then I can start with the 41st product, and then of course scroll down and say the next 40 products, as I said here, until 80th. Yeah, I hold my shift key, I select all of them. Of course, you can also select individual of them if you hold your control key. Um, but in my case, uh, using all the uh, all those products at, up till the 80th, click on group here and say these are my, um, let's say basic products, products, and um, press enter to name the group. And then of course the last one, let's say 81 to the end, the last one here, this product here, I say group, and this will be the, um, um, let's say, other products, okay, other products. Okay, press enter, and we are done, like that. Okay, and we got all three products here. Of course, there's also an include other. You could also use this one to group the other products in the other category, that's also possible. But for me now, I have simply created those three groups. Now, if I click OK, watch what happens at the right side in the fields label. I click OK, and then a new group gets created. As you can see here, this is the group symbol, and this group is now available for us. And we can use this group here in our donor chart. So I can either remove, when I select the product donor chart first, I can remove the product name, and then I can use my product group instead and drag it into the legend. And if I do that, now it's not that cluttered anymore, right? I have my simply my basic products, my top products, and my other products here. I also have my legend, and I have my donor chart in here. So that's what I prefer, to have it not that cluttered. Also, an additional thing you can do here, remember what we had with the date drill down. If I go here, you know that if you hover over that, you have these drill down functionalities, right? Which you can use. Now, they are also available for other visuals. So all you need to do, if you go back to the final report here, you could select this one here, and then under the product group, you can drag the product name inside. Like drag and drop it, like that. And watch what happens. As soon as I do this, now I have the same drill down functionality here as I had for my bar chart with the dates. So I can also here then go to the next level, here expand one level down, and then I would see exactly this visual again. Now I know that this for a fact doesn't look too good. I just wanted to show you the functionality itself. So maybe you have a dimension, which I would recommend of course, which uh, is m with less uh, unique values. Like in this case we have 101 products, it's much, way too much for this visualization, but if you have the on, you can also use this drill down functionality. So you give this to your audience. And then you may, might have a group, which you either have in the data set or you define it in Power BI. And then you can simply drill down to the lower level of the group. So let's say if this group, for instance, would have only three products then for each of those three categories, then you can simply offer the report user the option to drill down into the data and also see, in this case, the, the amount of uh, profit as well as the percentage number of profit, so the margin itself, or not the margin, but the percentage number of total profit, um, and, and visualize that. So simply drill into a specific visualization. This can also be done simply by dragging additional fields into the legend here. For instance, for the donor chart. It will also work for the pie chart and other kinds of visuals. The drill down option, right? All you need to do is add the fields here. But for me now, I simply remove it because the drill down is not, doesn't look very good. Simply too much products here. But this could be also a visualization I like to have, like this grouping here. Then I also like to maybe visualize the sales over time. So then I think a visual like, for instance, this would be good. So align clustered color chart. So I select it and I have it here. And then I add maybe my date, date dimension here. I go with the date, add in the dates here. And then next to the dates, I'd like to have here my measures and I'd like to see my total sales. There we are, here we go, and we can see them. And of course, I like to drill in here I'd like to see it maybe on year uh, monthly, or let's say actually, maybe let's go with the quarter level that I mentioned here, right? And of course, we can also place this somewhere and make it maybe bigger here and also place it in our report view, like that, right? Of course, depends on how you want to visualize that. Then maybe I'd like to customize a little bit more. I go to my formatting option here, and then under the 
the data color is actually fine, but the data labels, let's turn them on. So I can see also the labels in here, right? The numbers itself. And if I go in here one more time, I say for the position, I'd like to see them actually inside end. So I can see the numbers in here, okay? So depending on where you want to place it, there are various positions to place them. And also a text size you can increase as well as the font size and the color itself as well. So I choose actually specifically here the line and cluster color charts, the column charts. So I go back here under the option and I also have the option to add something to the line here. So let's go with, let's say, a profit margin. So it makes sense to have a line, maybe the margin. So I'll drag this inside into the line, drop it here on the line values, and then we also see a development here of the margin. It's also available for us here, right? It will also be added. If you do that here, and let's say go to the data labels, maybe, just maybe, we should uh, make sure that maybe you don't want to show them, depending on, maybe it's too much here, a little bit too cluttered. It depends, actually, as on your, on your per personal preference. For me now, I leave it inside, but of course, as I said, you can adjust this if you want. Besides this, I like to see some KPIs, so some KPI figures. That is why I can either use here the card, but in my case, I go with the multi-card. So I want to select the multi-card option, which is there for us. There it is. And then I'd like to see maybe my total sales. This one, I'd like to see my total cost. I'd like to see the profit as well as the profit margin. So a lot of measures here. And then I can also make this a bit smaller here and maybe place it somewhere in the middle, whatever I want to place it. So like that, I'll drag it, maybe on three dots, drag it on here. And then of course also select it and maybe form it. And let's say align here and maybe I align them, distribute horizontally like that, for instance. Okay, could do that. Don't have to do it. It's just a, just an one option to do that. And uh, yeah, that already looks kind of okay for me, so that's fine. Uh, beside this, maybe I'd like to have some kind of date slicer here. So I could simply go under date option here and go with the, let's say the fiscal year. So I'll select the slicer here and then simply so use the fiscal year option, this one here. And by, f by effect, I don't want a slice here. I don't like the default option. Instead, I would go in here under the, the settings of the slicer and say for the uh, general settings, I like to see this as uh, horizontally, like that. I personally prefer this view in here, okay? And then I can drag this somewhere and place it on my report here, and then if I filter, I can click on it, and then I would see only specific relevant data for this specific dimension. Maybe I select it here, and then go under the formatting option and say for my, uh, let's say, background is fine, but let's actually go with the, take a look at the items. The items, maybe I'd like to see them in uh, white, and then the background itself, I adjust this to this blue color, and then I would have it like that, okay? Again, it's totally up to your personal preferences. Also, I don't think I need the fiscal year header here. I think this is self-explanatory, at least for me. So I also uh, slice the header, I turn this off. Okay, like that, so that's fine. So here we go. Okay, so we got this in our report, and of course you can add additional uh, visualizations here. It's just really your personal preference, and here I really like to give you um, just some basic insights, some basic ideas, but I'd like you to really create your own report here, right? So try out the different things which are available for you. Uh, one more thing I would I like to do is I like to actually customize all these um, visuals we currently have. Because you can see we got a white background and they are simply normal. But remember that each of the visuals itself has the formatting option. So you can select this and just check out what's available for you here. For instance, you could say I'd like to see a border. If you turn on border, then, uh, and also go with the border maybe, and you can see that if I untick this, you already have a border here. So a little black uh, line around it. So you can customize even further. Here, you could say for the border itself, I'd like to have here some radius. If you type in, for instance, 10 pixels, just to see what it looks like, and if you untick the visual, you see that now you have this round borders right at the end uh, for your visuals. Maybe this is something you'd like to have in your report. So that's, that's one way how you can customize all the visuals. Another way could be that you like to actually also add shadow. So if you turn on shadow, then you would also have some kind of basic shadow around. Uh, probably it's not that easy to see simply because of the background of the image currently, but also something you can adjust in here. And also take a look whether there are additional functionalities, for instance, the color outside and so on, right? Color here, maybe make it blue, right? So now you can see, hopefully you can see it, even though it doesn't look too good, but you can customize the color here even further and adjust this to your personal needs. Maybe go with a black here, just a black it, just in case you want to use it closer. And you can do, of course, the same for the other visuals as well. 
Now, beside this, these options here, you can also play around with the background. Because currently, by default, in this, at least in this um, current theme, all the visuals have a white background. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't like that. If you do not like it, click on a visual, and then go in the formula option and say for the background, turn it off. So if you turn the background off, you see that now you don't have the background anymore. And you can see only the visual, uh, basically the original background of the of the, the image which we used, so from the report view. Yeah. But if you do this, then of course you would have to adjust the colors here for the, for the as you can see here, for all the labels as well. So this is something which you really have to explore, right? For instance, for the uh, the detail labels, that's fine, but then you adjust the color and maybe make them uh, black, for instance. You can see them hopefully better, as you can see here, right? And maybe you also increase the size to, let's say, um, let's try out 15 maybe, and you can see bigger labels here. And also, of course, we would have to adjust the legend. So we'll go in here, go on the legend, and also say the color should be actually black here, and also maybe the size. I think the size is fine, should keep it small, but um, let's try that out at least, 15. Maybe that's already too big for us, right? So as I said, it's something you need to try out yourself. And here, the best practice which I can give you here is, of course, turn to the filter, you don't want a filter. Uh, the best practice I can give you here is um, do the, the customization of your specific theme at the beginning, right? So if you go to view here, choose a theme you would like to use and then customize the theme exactly the way you want it. So it takes a little bit of time here, but then it might make be easier than customize everything here in the report itself. If you have something prepared, a theme you always want to use, just prepare it one time and then reuse it for all your reports. Might be easier, especially if you're working with a company and you have, of course, then a corporate identity which you want to implement. Um, I just want to do the same for the other one. So here I would also uh, go in here. I say uh, select the visual first, select it, and then under, let's actually make this smaller here. Um, first untick this, select this one one more time. Okay, here we go. I go to formatting options. And then I also say I'd like to untick maybe the background then I can see it like that. And then of course I would also maybe adjust all the different kinds of, in this case, all the different kinds of, um, yeah, well, the X axis, the Y axis and so on. So yeah, you need to go inside here and then we'll also adjust the color here. Let's say they make this black here, so dark and also maybe increase the color here. Let's say um, 12, just see how that works. Okay, that would be fine. And then of course, maybe also so the same for the X axis, just that you see, you know exactly what we do here. So we go in here, let's say also make this maybe more black here, which we used, and also try maybe, let's say uh, 12, um, here we go. And it also makes it a little bit bigger, of course, right? And of course you need to, to continue doing this uh, with all the other things as well. So if you scroll down, um, you can see additional information here, the color here for the second one, also make it black maybe. Um, we can also see here the background, now the dots here black. And here the secondary axis show secondary, no need it's off, uh, it's on, you can turn this on and then also customize this even further. So again, go with the black color here. And now you can see that here, The hopefully you can see it, but I can also make it bigger here that also now the, the right axis also here in black. So as I said, it uh, depends on the background itself. Maybe you could also tick the background one more time and play around with that. Go with the wallpaper here, which we have, and maybe set the transparency even higher. So let's try out 40 for instance. And now you can see the numbers are better to see, at least from my point of view. So I can also select this one here, this visual, and go in here and say also I'd like to see a border. I'm using 10 pixels just to be consistent here. So 10 pixels for the radius and then also maybe turn on the shadow and then I would also have a shadow in here like that. And maybe final here of course the legend. So let me actually go with the legend as well just to be consistent. Go in here make this maybe in black and then also have a look maybe you should increase the legend here. Uh, we had 15 I think in the other one so I also take on the 15 here like that. Okay. Again, this is totally up to you when you want to do it this way or not, uh, but it's just an example of what you can do, right? And here you need to really need to play around with. Here, I just keep it simple. I go in here, I take the background off, so I have also no background here. And also for these margins, I also would like to go in here and say I like to use a border, the 10 pixels. So switch this to 10, maybe like that. So we got a 10 pixels. Also turn on the shadow, so we have consistent here. And then of course, maybe click on one more time and also go inside, do this correct. So we say for the data labels, we'd like to have a black color, that's actually fine. And maybe we increase the text size to 15. And uh, then we go under the category labels here and also make the color dark. So I have the darker here and also maybe increase the size to 15. And then we can simply uh, go in here and also remove the background and have it inside like that. 
And of course here we need a little more space, it looks like it at least. So drag that and also select it one more time. Go on the formatting options and then align it and also distribute horizontally. Final one is this one here. Also, uh, just to be consistent here, also untick the background. Okay. And we got our final report. Now, of course, this is by no means a complete report and I'm sure that you can create something much more uh, interesting, appealing to your audience that I do here. It's just an example which I want, wanted to show you here, what you can do. And when you do it, just be careful that um, you have the right color to your background, for instance, that this is visible. Also take into account that you don't want to display too much information um, on, on a specific report. Always remember you can create additional report pages in Power BI, so don't put everything inside one page. Use several pages. And also don't use too much information on, for instance, a pie chart or a donut chart. Doesn't look too good. Also reduce information maybe by grouping or trying other things, which you can help there. Okay. Finally, what I like to show you is one more additional measure. Because remember we talked about uh, AI features in Power BI and there's a really nice feature, a new feature, which is this smart narrative. So uh, if you are done with creating your report page, what you could do is then you can try out this smart narrative visual. So what it basically does is it analyzes the data you have in the view itself. So basically all our visualizations, so this one, as well as this one we've created, as well as all our KPI figures here. And what it does then is simply creating a little summary for you. So let's try that out. Let me actually click on it, click on the smart narrative here. And then you see that it scans now, analyzes the page, and then it returns text here. And this is the text. Of course, we can make this maybe a little bigger here as our text here. And you see basically what this what this is. So you can see here a profit margin trended up 0.2% increase while total sales and so on trended down between January 2019 and January 2021. And it gives you additional information here. Now I don't want to dive into uh, too deep into that. You can read through it. You can try it out yourself on your own data set if you want. But what this actually does for you is really it's scanning all the visualizations you have in the current report view. It's scanning all the data points inside and then it simply creates a summary for you and tries to analyze the data and give you more information. So it could be helpful to apply it. You don't have to use it, but I just wanted to mention it to you. And I think it's really, really cool. And it's a new feature, at least at this point in time. So I encourage you to try it out. Okay. So that's it actually for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you create your own report now. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.